Good morning, team. Thank you so much for jumping on this very important Monday morning pep talk today. Um, we are going to talk about multiplying your time. And, you know, as I get into this, you'll see the importance of it. Before, before I go there, I want to remind you of my professional purpose, and that is to help you, the broker advisor, optimize your productivity and help you become the best version of yourself. Why? Because happy brokers sell more real estate. We do that by helping you handle challenges and opportunities that you face every single day. And if you can effectively manage certain situations that arise on a daily basis in your business, you'll be more productive and live a life that is the best version of you. And my ask for you today is to listen today as if we're in an office in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, okay? That's how I'm going to speak today. Um, so on this 192nd episode of my Monday Morning Pep Talk, we continue with our journey through Take Flight version 4.0. We're going to hit today on a very important topic, the power of the multiplication of your time. A multiplication of your time. Super achievers and ELPs, elite level producers, deeply understand the value of time and know that one of the best ways to improve time efficiency is to build processes for tasks that are done over and over in your business. As real estate brokers and advisors, the steps in a transaction are relatively the same, depending on your market and differ slightly based on the property that you're selling or helping your buyers purchase and the client that you're working with, okay? The idea of multiplication, a term I picked up from Rory Vaden while reading his book, Procrastinate on Purpose, Five Permissions to Multiply Your Time. Multiplication states that by building out a process once and executing it consistently over time, you will pay yourself back the original time invested with the time process saves you. Read that again. Multiplication states that by building out a process once and executing it consistently over time, you will pay yourself back the original time you invested with the time that that process saves you. And once the original time invested is paid back, you benefit from time savings moving forward for the life of your business. That is multiplication. This is how super achievers and ELPs leverage time. The next step in the maturation of your business is to hire people to execute those tasks that fall below your average profit per hour figure, keeping your focus on the four most important parts of your business, which are lead generation, database management, negotiating offers, and other strategic efforts that you have, okay? CEO level stuff. The benefits of adopting multiplication strategies in your business are it saves a significant amount of time over the life of your business by not having to reinvent the wheel each time you start a new transaction. Okay? It improves the overall quality of the professionalism your clients will experience. Number three, when you build transactional processes, you have something to train to when your team grows. So you train people to the processes, not what's in your head. Number four, it drastically decreases stressful and embarrassing moments caused by you dropping the ball or dropped balls, okay? Five, if build out right using tools like monday.com, ClickUp, or Trello, you can get a quick snapshot of your transactions and eliminate the did that get done. This is why many of you lose sleep. You wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, did I forget to do that? Well, guess what? If you have processes and technology to support those processes, you can do a quick look at what got done and you'll know. There's nine different transaction types that need a well thought out process. This is your number one, your pre-listing process. Create a process for everything you need to do between that first client interaction 
and the signing of a listing agreement. You know, past client picks up the phone, says we're ready, or you get a lead off of a call or off of a off of your social media or a sign, and they want you to come do that listing presentation. This is that pre-listing process. This would include your listing presentation. Number two, your listing transaction and marketing process. Build out a document, build out and document your strategies needed to bring a property to, to market. Listing transaction and uh, marketing process. This is also going to be all of those transactional steps from, from closing or from contract to close. All right. Very, very, very important. Number three, your initial consultation process. This for the buyer. What is your step-by-step -step process of educating a buyer and introducing them to the buying process for the current market? This is where you set expectations, where you set expectations based on the current market. Number four, your buyer search and transaction process. You'll need a process for how you roll out the search process for a buyer and step-by-step -step contract to close process. Okay. Number five, your post-closing process for your buyer. How do you transition a buyer from closing to a lifetime of a follow-up? We'll get more into all of that as we get into database and relationship management, which is the third segment of your business. We'll get into that this summer. But what is that contract close? I'm sorry, what is that post closing follow up for a buyer? Same thing for a seller. That's number six. How do you transition a seller from the closing from the closing to a lifetime of follow up? It's much different process than a buyer post closing process. A seller might be leaving the market. So we gotta we gotta look at things a little bit differently. Number seven, the referral process, incoming. What is your process for handling incoming referrals from other brokers, advisor and advisors? Okay. There should be a process for that. Same thing for outgoing. How do you stay on top of referrals you've sent to other brokers and buyers, advisors in different markets? What is your process for following up? How do you track that? And number nine, your referral process from clients. How do you recognize and show gratitude for introductions made by clients come out of your database, your top 100? How do you let them know that there was a successful, that there was, that they were able to, you were able to help that friend? get into a property. Now, um, I'm going to say this, and please don't take it the wrong way, but if you can't answer these questions, right, that we just talked about, what is, how do you, how do you do all these things? You've got a lot of work to do, okay? To document these processes, you can just simply start by using Excel or a Google Sheet, um, and, you know, or you can go into, you know, more advanced, you know, applications like Monday.com, ClickUp, or Trello. Here's some simple tips on that you can use when building out your processes, okay? First, first and foremost, each task of the process should have an owner. So if you're a single operator, everyone, you, do every, you do every piece, so you own every part of the process. If you've got a team, each person on the team should own one you know, part of the process. Each task should be owned by someone. As your business grows and you add support to your business, you can always rebucket your tasks. Every six months to a year, you should go back through if you've got people working with you and rebucket those tasks. Number two, after each transaction, take 15 minutes to look for areas that you can improve those processes. Just sit back and say, okay, with this particular buyer or seller, what was one area that my process might be a little in need of some work? Or are there things on my process that can go that, that really aren't needed? The goal is to optimize these as much as you can. And I think it's a great practice after each transaction to take just 15 minutes and review how your process performed for that individual client. Now, be specific as possible. Sometimes it's the tiny details that are the most memorable for your clients. Most memorable for your clients are those small little thoughtful details. Um, number four, build out a library of template emails that you can cut and paste that support different tasks. This again is a wonderful multiplication concept. Why rewrite an email every single time when you can go into a library, okay? Cut, paste, send, and you know, with AI and a lot of those things right now, you can go in and have some of these AI to really perfect some of the language, help you write some stuff. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, but templated emails are a very, very important part of uh, this process. Number five, 
just start, just start doing it. And again, you, I would say start in Excel or a Google doc or a Google sheet, excuse me, before you decide to invest in that, that transactional software, get it out of your head. Then when you do go buy, you know, monday.com or a Trello or a ClickUp, you have it all built out, you just copy paste into that technology, but get it out of your head. That's the, that's really, you know, honestly, I probably should have put that number one in this category as the first thing to do, right? Building out these processes and, and processes and systems is a wise investment, not just in time saved, but it'll increase your commissions earned. I'm going to say that again. Building out these processes and systems is a wise investment, not just in time saved, but it will increase your commissions earned because you'll just have more time. Okay, getting it out of getting it out of your head is the most important first step, just like I mentioned earlier. Okay. You will become more referable because your clients will feel the professional, feel the professionalism. The level of your transactional processes equals your standards for client care. And these processes will become a significant part of your value proposition. I have to read that again. I have to read that again. The level of your transactional processes equals your standards for client care and these processes will become a significant part of your value proposition mr and mrs seller i have 131 steps that i perform between contract being executed and we close the value of using me as your broker advisor is that i understand that the most difficult part of my role for you is getting you from contract the closing table. I have 131 steps, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that help us get there. This type of verbiage can easily be used in your listing presentation as a differentiator, as a differentiator. You're doing all the work. Use it. Get it out of your head. Put it in processes. This will help you help you make more money and just make you make your life so much easier. It is my prediction that there will be an there will be incredibly few successful broker advisors remaining in five years that are hobbyists. I don't even think it's going to take five, two to three. You cannot expect to win if you just put up a sign, put the listing in the MLS and hope for contracts and wing it from there. Likewise, you cannot execute based just on your experience alone and what's between your ears. The industry is getting more and more sophisticated and baseline entry into being competitive is and will be what we've discussed today. Really what we're going to discuss in all of Take Flight version 4.0. But today, we t this is this was what really what your clients see is your professionalism during these, con these transactions. My question for you is what truly is the value? What truly is your value? That you bring? What sets you apart? What type of business do you want to run? How stressful do you want it to be? What is your growth strategy? What I've covered today would be a terrific quarterly initiative for, the, for your next 12 week quarterly goal. This could take a couple quarters, honestly, but will pay you back over and over and over and over and over. Little pro tip for you today. You might just want to bookmark this episode. One of the most important episodes that I will do during this Take Flight version 4.0, which will go probably anywhere from 45 episodes, give or take, which will be most of the year. But this is going to be in the top five for sure. Okay. So team, that was a lot. There's a lot, lot, lot in this call today. And I could go 10 levels deep on much of this. I won't, but this is where you need to put a lot of your focus if you feel like you're in good shape everywhere else. It's really super important. Team, I appreciate you jumping on today. It means a lot for me every week to see all these people jumping on the calls. And as you know, we'll get this out to you um, next, or we'll get this out to you in the email tomorrow and the transcript and uh, 
we will, uh, it'll have the audio, it'll have the transcript, it will have product review of monday.com. And if you're not on that email, just go to my Instagram, go into the link on my Instagram under Ask Jim Miller. And second thing down on Linktree is subscribe to my email content. A lot, I've heard a lot of agents that are saving those and putting them in an actual folder so they can view back to them. I think that's probably not a bad strategy. So with all that being said, team, have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you next Monday.